Hey there, friends. It's time for another one of Fritz's 10-minute tips. It's been a while since I've had one of these, but we've been actually working on building the product for you. So I want to come through now and show you some cool new things you can do with ASP.NET Core. And in this one, I want to show you a little bit about configuration and all the different ways you can configure your application inside of Visual Studio, outside of Visual Studio, and your operations team might be interested in. So let's take a look. I'm looking here at the default app settings JSON file, and it's not very exciting. What if I want to actually configure something using app settings JSON, have some strong configuration like we used to have with web config? Well, that strongly typed configuration, I can actually write into a class. And in this case, I wrote a class called my configuration. I know, uh, naming things comes a little bit easy to me, and this seems pretty easy to name. Um, so I've got two properties here, the menu bar background color that I want to set in my application, and then the menu bar text color that I want to set as well. Now, I'm just going to change the menu bar colors in this, in this demo. That's a simple demonstration, but you can certainly extrapolate these concepts to all kinds of other things like database connection strings, uh, cloud API keys, social network keys, all kinds of things that you need to secure or configure in your application. To make this simple, we're just going to change some colors in the user interface. Now I have this configuration. I want to configure it in my startup class here. Um, I'll actually, inside of the dependency injection section right here, I'll configure my configuration class by getting the configuration section called my configuration from the configuration object that's built in my constructor up here. And then I'll add that configuration as a singleton so it's always available to be injected anywhere in my application. Now, I actually want to use my configuration on the layout to change my menu bar colors. So here on row one, you can see I've set up the inject directive and I'm receiving an object of I options of type my configuration. This is the wrapper that's placed around my plain old C sharp class here and it'll deliver my config options. Now to get to that actually strongly typed my configuration class, I actually need to reference the value coming out of there. And you can see from the tooltip, it'll come out of type my configuration. Down here, I added a style block that'll set the bootstrap classes for navbar inverse to that background color that I defined, make that important. And then same thing with the fonts will set the color and make that important with my CSS. So let me start this sample so you can see that it's injecting these features into my application. All right, now you can see it loaded my application in my browser there on the right, and I've got a black menu bar with white text, and here's the output from the Kestrel web server showing me this is the development hosting environment. Not bad but I actually want to be able to configure those settings from my app settings JSON file. So I'm going to stop my web server and I'm going to go write some entries into that app settings JSON and we'll reload and see what happens. So I've defined a section here called my configuration and I have the same option names, the same property names that I do inside of my class, menu bar BG color and menu bar color. You'll notice the case of those matches identically to my configuration class. All right, let's restart our sample and see what happens this time. Now my header bar is green with the black font, just like I defined in my app settings JSON. Now, this is the type of configuration you want to use if you have common settings or things that you want to be outside of your application that you can change easily. They don't need to be secured. It's okay if you check them into source control and you want these to be available to your folks in your production space so they can change the way your application runs easily. Well, that's nice. It's green and black, but there's other options that I can use here also. So check this out. 
I can actually change the way my application behaves by passing in environment variables that overlay these configuration options. If you look in the startup class, when my configuration is constructed, the last item after adding an app settings JSON is to add environment variables. So if I use specially named environment variables, I can overlay those app settings. Now, the environment name is also tracked as an environment variable, and you can see I'm using the environment name in the default configuration here. So the environment is passed in, and that environment name by default is actually production. ASP.NET Core thinks that you're running on production. But this environment name is set with another environment variable that you can see inside of Visual Studio by looking at the project properties, and it's right here. So Visual Studio defines that your ASP.NET Core application is running in the development mode by setting the ASP.NET Core underscore environment environment variable. But I want to set environment variables for my menu bar, background color, and my menu bar color. How do I do that? So I'm going to open a console window, and we'll run the application from here. All right, here I am in my folder. So I'm going to just run this at the command line after I set my environment variables. So the environment variables that I need to set in order to make this work are actually, let me resize a little bit here, are actually my configuration colon menu bar BG color. So you separate the elements of your configuration hierarchy with colons, and ASP.NET Core will pick that up and include that in your configuration. So let's set my, my configuration menu bar BG color equals red. Okay. Now let me run the application from here inside of my command window so that I have that environment configured. And there we go. I have a red background color on my menu bar. And all I did was set an environment variable. Now, this is important that you can use this because this is something that you can set from your cloud services configuration or your hosting services configuration for your application. Operations folks also have all kinds of tricks they can use with PowerShell scripts and other configuration places that they can put environment variable information appropriate for your application. And don't forget, Docker containers can pass environment variables into their hosted containers in very much the same way with environment variables. So that's another trick that we can use, but there's somewhere else that we can stash environment variables as well. If we go back into my sample here, you'll see that there is a web config by default for our application. This is the configuration information for the IIS web server on Windows. I can actually come through here and add environment variables inside of the definition of the ASP.NET Core module that's being run for IIS. Right? IIS, the Internet Information Server on Windows, stores all of their configuration inside of web.config files now. So in order to launch ASP.NET Core, by default, in our template files, we get this handler added. And then this configuration of the module here, you can nest inside of it some XML that says, here are environment variables that I need you to configure when you host the ASP.NET Core process. And you'll see it has the same configuration syntax for those environment variables. My configuration colon menu bar BG color menu bar color. So in this case, I'm going to set them to blue with black text. I'm going to run this this time using IIS. And these configuration options should be injected and change the way that my application is displayed. Let's launch and see what happens. All right, now I have a blue background with black text. Now, this is something you may want to use, these configuration options inside of the IIS configuration. If there's something specific on a machine that you want to be bound 
to the IIS configuration that you don't want hanging around with specifically your application or you don't want to use app settings JSON. You want to put these in a tight place that it's configured and managed by those folks who are running your application and operations. So it's another option. It's a choice that you have. Now the last option that I want to show you is our recommended configuration for developers. Now, if you notice, I have this app settings JSON file and it's got my configuration sitting here in clear text and and folks could have written all kinds of things into this file that are connection strings, API keys, stuff that may accidentally get checked into source control. Now, come on. How many of you out there have accidentally checked a username and password into GitHub and published it in a public repository for everybody to see? Don't deny it. I know some of you have done it because it's real easy to search for the word password and find all kinds of people's web config files out there. Okay? So, how can we store this secure information so that folks can't see it or find it when it's checked into source control, but as a developer, it's available inside my application. So there's an option available to you called user secrets. And user secrets is something that's added to your application and has a GUID so that it's hidden a little bit on your machine. Check this out. I'm going to come down and choose edit configuration sample CS proj and check out this element here on line 9 user secrets ID and then there's this GUID here now that GUID is there to just scramble things up and make it a little bit harder to identify this project on disk when we go and hide our configuration there's a package added down here at the bottom Microsoft extension configuration user secrets this will allow us to load our user secrets into our configuration in the application and when you look at my startup class, you'll see there's an element here called user secrets, and I've actually turned it off for right now. I'll turn it back on. By executing add user secrets, this will add whatever secrets are defined behind the folder identified by that GUID into my application. Now, how do I actually write those elements into my user secrets file? If you right click on your application here, you can actually choose manage user secrets. And it opens this file, secrets.json. And you'll notice I have the same structure of my configuration here that I want to overlay into my application. And if I mouse over this, you can see this is actually written into my app data roaming folder. Okay? And it's under user secrets slash and then some GUID slash secrets.json. So this is just a file sitting on disk inside of my app data folder so that when I log into somebody else's machine, whether it's my machine or a, a virtual machine, and I'm still on my active directory, this information will follow me because it's in my profile to those other machines. So now because I've enabled user secrets, this configuration should be loaded instead of my environment variables and those other things that are already defined. Because when you look at my configuration as it's being built here, the important thing to know is last element in wins. So my app settings JSON is defined there on line 21, where I set the background color to green. That's going to be ignored because there's environment variables that are going to be overlaid from AIS where we set the background color to blue. But that's going to be ignored because the user secrets are going to be added on top of that where I'm setting my background color to yellow. Is that, is that easy to follow? How we're going to supersede those previous settings and the last configuration in on line 29, the user secrets, will succeed. And we're only adding the user secrets if we're in development mode. When we're in our production area, it'll ignore this. It won't actually try to find this file on disk. Let's start IIS and see how this version of the application works. 
And there we go. I've got a yellow menu bar now. Now you want to use user secrets when you're storing things like your test social media accounts, okay? Or other things that are in your developer configuration that you don't want to get into production. You don't want to let those passwords or credentials or API keys get into source control because they're things that you as a developer or your development team manage and you don't want to expose it to the world, okay? These are secrets. These are things that we're not going to encrypt, but you and your development team are going to share in development mode only. All right, so to recap, I have a black background because I have a configuration, strongly typed configuration, with default settings that black and white are the colors of my menu bar. I have a green header bar when I defined my elements in app settings JSON, and I didn't have anything else to overlay it. So these are the ones that take priority. I changed my header bar to red by setting environment variables in, in the format of the hierarchy of my configuration. So it was my configuration colon menu bar BG color equals red, and I got the red background color. I can also define those environment variables inside of my IIS web config as environment variable items inside of the ASP.NET Core module configuration. And finally, we used user secrets to add a yellow menu bar configuration that will only appear in development mode. Thanks for watching this tip. Those are all the different things you can do with configuring your application with ASP.NET Core. I hope to see you again in a, in a week or two where we'll have another 10-minute tip.